Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Confidence is never a question when it comes to wide receivers, and these two are no different. It's Jeffrey's Eagles going up against Allen's Chargers. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. And Larry, I thank you. We are at the home of the Chargers for the next four years as you get a look at the StubHub Center here in the L.A. suburb of Carson. The scene here in Carson a moment ago, both teams making their way out of the tunnel. Phillip Rivers, now the main man here in L.A. as his Chargers will match up with the Philadelphia Eagles. And we say hi again, one and all. Brandon Gaughton here as we count you down to kick off. And I turn to my partner, that's Charles Davis. And Charles, I know even a former defensive back like you can admire some of the receivers in the game today. And Larry showed us a couple that are very likely to stand out in this one. Yeah, and it's hard for me to admit that I actually admire receivers. <laughs> but with their acrobatics, with their speed, with their moxie and the way they go up and get the football, they can change the outcome of a game in an instant. Here's the kicker, Jake Elliott, ready to get this one started. And we are underway in Southern California. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Phillip Rivers and company hoping to dust off their Week 2 loss to Miami. And you know, something bad followed San Diego to L.A., and that is close losses. The Chargers have lost 10 one-possession games since 2016, by far the most in the NFL. There's no way you can even calculate that. 10, Ten. since 2016. Yeah. And another one this past week. And the problem with that is when you get into those pressure key situations, when you have that much baggage attached to your team, you don't think you're going to find a way to win. You wonder what's going to happen that will cause you to lose again. They've got to find a breakthrough, and they need it soon. Now a first carry for Melvin Gordon. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage. They almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Now Rivers going to give to Gordon on the draw, and he'll get this only up to about the 35. Call it a gain of three, but not enough to move the sticks. It'll be third and about a foot or two. This is how things look to start for the Chargers. And the guy we want to give love to is Antonio Gates. Touchdown number 112 in week two on a short pass in the third quarter. Pro Tony Gonzalez's record for a tight end. And this is a record that's not just longevity. You know, you don't get this record just from hanging around. You get this record by producing. Tony Gonzalez did, now Antonio Gates, and I think the Chargers are being very smart with him down the stretch. He's almost become a designated pass catcher, only coming in in key situations and still putting the points on the board. Open man, it's Allen. Rivers saying, welcome back, Mr. Allen. It's a Charger first down. So opening drive, third down, they go with a slant, it works. And I'm wondering when the league's gonna figure it out because everyone throws it on third down. You expect pressure, so you want the ball out of the hands of the quarterback quickly. It's a three-step route ordinarily, and you're throwing it where you see the receiver breaking towards you. So it's an inside route. Everyone likes it, and it's executed very well. Now Gordon on first down. And a great strong move, but he'll still be stopped shy of midfield. A gain of three, second down. And we peek at the defense now for Philadelphia. In 2016, the Eagles showed that they were going to be aggressive on defense. A lot of man coverage and send the pass rushers after the quarterback. I don't expect that to change at all in 2017, but they are looking for increased play from their cornerbacks to try to lock down some wide receivers. Seven yards to go on second down. From the gun, Rivers. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. 
this team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. And yeah, the Eagles will go with an extra DB here as they prepare for a stop on third. Thinking pass all the way. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. Finding his safety valve here. That's complete. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Call it a gain of three. And that'll bring up fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they've rallied and made the tackle. On to punt, Drew Kayser, second-year man from Texas A&M. Back deep is Darren Sproles. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. Carson Wentz now bringing the Philadelphia Eagles onto the field. You called their game last week against Kansas City. How did he look? What did you think? I think he continues to ascend as a second-year quarterback. I've seen growth already both in the pocket and movement outside of it, although I wouldn't mind if he used his legs a little bit more to pick up a few more first downs running it. But all in all, he shows great patience, great poise, great presence in the pocket, and delivers pretty well downfield. The tough part for him right now is the running game is just not clicking. So he's getting a lot of pressure in his face. Now a first carry for LeGarrette Blount. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. Eagle starters here. And Charles, earlier you mentioned that Wentz wasn't getting a whole lot of help from the rushing game. Well, you got Blunt, you got Sproles, Smallwood, but Blunt only played six snaps last week. And didn't have a single carry. I mean, that was the interesting part about the game against Kansas City is that Darren Sproles became the primary ball carrier and then, of course, catching it out of the backfield. Wendell Smallwood got a few carries in there sprinkled in. Donnell Pumphrey, he's on IR. Corey Clement, the undrafted free agent out of Wisconsin, he's made the team. Got a couple of plays on offense but didn't carry it. I think, again, Philadelphia is going to have to look at downsizing who's going to carry the football and make someone a primary because they've got to take some of the pressure off of Wentz throwing the ball downfield. Still second down. It's hauled in by Torrey Smith. And he'll be out of bounds right around the 20. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. In recent years, the slot receiver has really gained stature in the NFL because they can do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. Now Wentz on third down. And that is incomplete. And that's a great opening series defensively. You force what should be a three and out on your opening possession. And great coverage there on third down to force the incompletion to set up fourth. Donnie Jones set to punt it away. Now in his 14th year in the NFL. Travis Benjamin deep for the Chargers. Returning, it's Benjamin. Now after the punt on that play, we've got a man down on the field. We'll step aside and come back to Carson.
Rivers now from the 50. Caught left side, Williams. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And all the way in for a charger touchdown. Tyrell Williams, 50 yards. And the Chargers have taken a first quarter lead. And there they got him the ball. Just get it to him, let him do the rest. You know, he probably said that to his quarterback as he broke the huddle. I like the play call. Just get it to me. I'll take care of the rest of it. Helping out his rack, right? RAC. Run after catch. And he loves that. And he's going to carry that in at contract time. They'll going for two. They'll kick the point after. And the Chargers grab the 7-0 lead. And they're able to get the connection on the long touchdown pass. And that's one of the easiest drive summaries you'll ever see. One play, touchdown. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. We'll see the Eagles on offense here again in a second, but Alshon Jeffrey and Torrey Smith, speaking of that offensive wide receiver, they're really starting to find a spark with Carson Wentz, aren't they? They certainly are, and it started back in the offseason when Carson Wentz had a passing camp that he held for the receivers and running backs in North Dakota. And it was the first time any of those guys had ever been to the Dakotas other than Torrey Smith, who had been to South Dakota one time. But trying to integrate them, big-time targets, great catch radius, Wanting to make sure the ball gets to them so they can make some plays downfield. On first down, Wentz. And complete to Zach Ertz. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And <laughs> what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. And they'll go Wentz to Blunt here. <laughs> get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. And a nice carry there of 15 yards. So under the category of, while it can't be us because we're not that good, but could you imagine if this was you? The Garrett Blunt, his first thousand yard season since what, 2010, his rookie year? And 18 touchdowns in a regular season? <laughs> And no longer with New England. He is over 30 now. He turned 30 in December. I don't know if that played a factor, but yeah, such a productive year, and then he's gone. Well, that just tells you this. Now he's going to be playing with a chip on his shoulder trying to prove something. They'll run again with Blunt. And some room to maneuver. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Back-to-back -back nice plays. 12 yards that time and a first down. That's another nice run. And I have to tell you, some of the coaches that I played for, their philosophies were always different when they see a guy running the ball well. Some of them wanted to immediately go to play action and throw it now because it's wide open. But other coaches said, you know something? Until they stop him, that big boy's going to keep getting the football. And that might be the direction that they're going to go right now. Four down, four down, 
They'll run it here with Blunt. There he goes again, and he's going to get this inside the 30. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Getting the sense, Charles, are going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, it's working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. They go play action here on first down. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. Torrey Smith, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Time quickly to look at the Chargers defense. 2016, the Chargers defense had its moments. They were ranked 10th against the run. Overall, total defense, though, they were 16th because they struggled a little bit against the pass, but they had a number of injuries, and they expect those guys back this year and expect to be an improved unit overall. Once again here on second and 10. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. That catch good for five. It's third down. And they get the completed pass, but still have more to go here on third down. Play action to Sproles, Wentz. And he is out of bounds, just a yard or two shy of the 10. Wentz to his new target, Smith for an eagle first down. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Here's Blunt. And he'll be dropped at about the 11 after only a yard. A one-yard gain could look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one-yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one-yard run, hey, congratulations to the defense. They won that one. Come back and get them the next time. Someone moved. Flag is out. That's going to be five yards. And that'll drive coaches crazy. You work all week on dealing with loud crowds, on dealing with motion, and then you have a guy jump. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Still and a long way to go for the offense here on second down. Now wins. His throw incomplete. An extra defensive back on the field for the Chargers now on third down. On third and long, it's Wins. That is caught inside the five. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. It's a pickup of 13, but they're still a bit short, and it'll be fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. And 
And Elliott puts this one through. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. And that field goal caps an 11 play drive. That's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and he'll take over at the 25. Charles, let's pivot for a second here. Got a moment. Toughest division so far certainly seems to be the AFC West, right? I mean, you have three undefeated teams. And we thought that going into the season, if you rank the toughest division in football based on last year's records and who they would play, the AFC West shows up as number one. And so far, they're handling it pretty well. Kansas City's 2-0 and and beat New England on the road on opening night. Oakland Raiders went to Tennessee, a trendy pick in the AFC South to win the division. Beat them on opening day. They're 2-0. And, and the Denver Broncos, behind Trevor Simeon and that great defense, also off to a 2-0 start. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. They keep it on the ground. Again, Gordon. And very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held them to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Second down, Rivers. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Well, let's see who this is on. So they saw the contact before the ball arrived. Penalty flag for pass interference. And trying to avoid pass interference is so difficult. You're trying to slow down these skilled receivers, and somehow, some way, they make plays on the football, and sometimes you're there too soon. And now inside the red zone, the offense will operate. First and goal, they'll look to smash it in. Maybe a quarterback sneak here. And he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. I don't know if there's any other way to put it, but that play was blown up right from the snap. How about the guys on the defensive side of the ball? It's almost like they were in the offensive huddle. Yeah, it's one thing to stand them up from that one yard line, pushing them back to the five, though. Wow. Yeah, I like what you just said there. Not just stand them up, but they end up making a play on the other side of the line of scrimmage. They come out here in the eye. Now the first carry for Brandon Oliver. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. From the three now, here they come on third and goal. Working out of the gun, Rivers. And that will be caught. It's Inman for the Charger touchdown. Dontrell Inman from three yards out. And the Chargers are going to add on to their lead. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? 
the timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. So that drive spanned five plays. And it ends with the Chargers getting into the end zone. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And he's going to be stopped here with a penalty marker on the field. I'm not sure what this is about. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that one looked pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. Play fake here on first down. Well, it's caught on the right side at Smith. And he's brought down. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. That's a matchup maybe they go back to their outer third of the field as this game continues. Yeah, I think back to my high school coach, John Ford, he used to say when we got big plays early in a game or good plays, he'd always say, foul it away, lad. Foul it away because he'd want to come back to it later in a key situation. They may come back to this one a little more often than that. Didn't he say laddie or did he say lad? Yeah, it just depended on what he was feeling at the okay. moment. Okay, I thought, I thought that was the guy you told me about that used to say laddie a lot. Laddie? When you heard laddie, he was usually in a pretty good mood. Lad? Yeah. <laughs> Gave a glimpse of his quick feet and then taken down right at the 30. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. Just two yards to go here on second down for the offense. Shotgun now for Wentz. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Alshon Jeffrey, the intended receiver, and it's third and short. Eagles on third down, just one for three thus far. Here it's third and two. Now a carry for Blunt. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. One quarter down, 14-3. That's our score. We'll come back to Southern California after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back live with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gauden. It's the Eagles with the ball here to begin quarter number two, and they've got it here with a first down.
Again, here's Blunt. And not even back to the line of scrimmage this time as they're on him quickly once more. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. One thing that really impressed me about Joey Bosa is that he doesn't sacrifice the run game trying to get sacks. This guy really knows how to hold the point of attack, great leverage, and then goes and sheds people and makes plays. And at 6'5", 270, just a monster. Absolute monster with a really high motor. Now Wentz throwing on second down. Looking left sideline, incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. The Eagles on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and 11. From the gun, it's Wins. And this is going to be incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. <laughs> He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. He made his first attempt, this from 45. And this is going to be no good. He misses it off to the left, and this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. The Chargers offense now, they get set to head back on the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. on first down. It's caught on the right side. Williams. Holding offense. So that one a hold right guard. And you understand why offensive and defensive linemen probably go to martial arts schools and work on their hands so often because that can be the make or break difference on a play. This time he had to grab a jersey in order to make the play happen. Got caught for the penalty. Following the penalty, here's Gordon. <laughs> And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. 13 yards on the pickup, and it's a second down. I remember a coaching friend of mine used to tell his running backs before games, make sure you run and jog with your offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking when those big behemoths start to create space for you up front. He did a pretty good job of just following those guys through there for a nice explosive run. Second down, they'll run with Gordon. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. He lost two there, and it's third down. I'm getting the sense that Fletcher Cox is making offensive linemen want to take the week off when they have to play against him. <laughs> it's a regular routine for him, isn't it? It really is. That play there, that's him all day long. Good luck trying to block him and keep him from disrupting your offense.
The Chargers on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and eight. From the gun, Rivers. He lost a big chunk, six yards there, and it leads to fourth down. Here's Drew Kayser now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. A look at Darren Sproles as he works his way back onto the field for this next go around. Now, I'm not going to say you completely abandon the passing game, but it would really behoove them to get this running game going more. That's the identity most teams are seeking, able to establish themselves, control the game by running it, have to touch it multiple times in order to have success in this game. Yeah, as we say, yeah, that's right. As we say all the time, that sets up the passing game. I feel like a broken record with that. Listen, we can be broken records all we want. Bottom line is, lather up that big horse <laughs> and let him run. On play action, Wentz. And the Chargers rush is going to get there. Down he goes. Joey Bosa in there to sack him for a loss of six. I think people underestimated how important fundamentals are because Joey Bosa's hand placement, hand usage, and ability to beat guys in front of him to get to the quarterback is pretty good for a young player. Yeah, ten and a half sacks last year as a rookie led all rookies. Only played 12 games, too. Uh, that's a good point. Garrett Blunt taking it in. And the Eagles are able to strike quickly for six. And with that carry, he's already over 100 yards here in the first half. And partner, you know exactly what he's saying to his teammates right now, right? Especially to the play caller. Give me the ball. Again, <laughs> and, and again, and again, and again. It's not that heavy, sir. I'll take it. On for the extra point, Jake Elliott. And he's got it. That cuts the lead. It's now 14 to 10. So two plays on that scoring drive. That's how they drew it up. And the long run into the end zone, and what a run it was. Elliott now to kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. Here now a look at Melvin Gordon. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. Good. 
He'll start the drive with a run by Gordon. And a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop the jab? Get closer and smother it just as they did on that last play. Now a second down throw for Rivers. Throw right side complete to Williams. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 17 yards for the Chargers there as they've got themselves a first down. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. to Gordon. Now Rivers. Got a man over the middle. It's Williams. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Now a 10th carry for Melvin Gordon. No dice this go around. He's hit behind the line and taken down. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Well, forget about finding a lane there. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Probably fortunate he was able to hold on to the football. Second down. Wide open. It's Allen complete. Touchdown, Allen! Keenan Allen, 41 yards. And the Chargers find a way to stretch their lead. When we draw up defenses on the board, we do account for every receiver. But on that particular play, somehow he was wide open, became an easy touchdown pass. The call is to go for one and kick the extra point. It's good, and it's 21-10. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. Now to kick this one away, and off it goes. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Back out for another drive comes LeGarrette Blunt. And Charles, you can't really fault him. He's over 100 yards already. He's not the reason they're losing. And that is really unusual because ordinarily, when you've set the tone this way and have run it this effectively, Usually your team's in control. So it's a very strange situation. 
And you're right. You can't fault him. He's done a great job for his team thus far. I'm guessing he's saying, feed me on the sidelines. Now will they continue to do it? The drive starts with a handoff to Blown. And he powers his way up past the 30. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking. But the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. On second down, here's Wentz. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. The Eagles on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third and four. Working from the gun. Wentz. Aguilar has it. And he's got the first down as he's up to the 45-yard line. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. down. Jeffrey reels it in over the middle. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Give him nine there on the first down completion. time to the tailback and he'll be taken down at the 44 yard line only a gain of a yard but that's all they needed is that's going to move the chains second and one and people want to run the football this is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there pick up the first down And he'll give it here to his running back. And now running right through it. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. That burst good for 20 and a first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. It's Wentz. A swing pass caught. And they do stop him, but he takes it all the way to the two.
Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. They come out here in the eye. They'll go to Blunt, try and pound it in. And he's in for an Eagles touchdown. LeGarrette Blunt with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Eagles have cut it back within a score. And always a good first half when you can hit pay dirt twice. And it never hurts to have that good feeling as the game moves on. Just think about halftime. If, it, if that's is all he gets, he'll just sit there at the half and think, all right, two already. I can get some more. I can get some more. And he'll be encouraging his offensive line to create some space. So that drive goes eight plays, and it ends in a touchdown run by LeGarrette Blunt. Elliott now to kick this one away. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Phillip Rivers now gears up to lead the offense on the field. And how about the start so far, Charles? Three first-half touchdown passes. And that's how you generate excitement on a team, keep your offense moving at a really high level, and it's also how you establish leadership by playing that well. Three touchdown passes, that's the way to lead. Now he's just hoping for number four. They'll start on the ground. This is Gordon on first down. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It'll go as a gain of 11 and a Charger first. I just love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. He's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. First and ten, Rivers. Allen has it, left side. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That one good for 13 and a Charger first. going to give it off to Gordon. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. But not a huge game there as we head towards the two-minute warning. It'll be interesting to me to see what they decide to do after the timeout. So two minutes to go in a wild first half. We'll come back to Southern California after this. A reminder with halftime approaching, when we get there, we'll ship you off to Orlando. Larry Ridley will have first half highlights and analysis. And I hope he's iced down his throat because he's got a lot to get through <laughs> because we've had no shortage of points scored in the first half. It has been a fun track meet. And they still need eight yards for the first here on second down. To throw is Rivers. 
And this complete to Henry over the middle. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. That catch good for five. It's third down. Brandon had a first round grade on Hunter Henry coming out of Arkansas for his ability to get downfield and create openings, create space. And he proved his worth as a rookie tight end in 2016. 34 catches led all rookie tight ends in the league. The Chargers on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This time it's third and three. From the gun, Rivers. This is Gordon on the dump off. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. As the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gaughan alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. The Chargers on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This will be third and six. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. Finds his target, it's Gates. And he'll be out of bounds, able to get it down to the 25 there. How many times have we seen this? Rivers to Gates on third down to keep the Charger drive alive. Do you get the sense, Brandon, that people are trying to retire Antonio Gates? They keep thinking this is almost the end of the line, and then he keeps making catches like the one we just saw there. He's the old reliable, you're right, just one of nine players in the NFL with 100 or more touchdowns. Fresh set of downs here. First down throw here for Rivers. And a big loss here as he's taken down. How about that? One of the so-called little guys putting the pressure on. That was a strong safety. When I was in college, we often called that a lightning blitz. Rivers. And 
and that's incomplete. Clock stops with 10 seconds left. And right now I take my rudimentary kindergarten skills and draw where the tackle box would be because that was close. I thought he was in the tackle box. He has to be very careful where he gets rid of the football from that spot. Yeah, they say there was a receiver in the area, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always a receiver in the area. Third and long for Rivers. And that is incomplete, stopping the clock with five seconds to go. They're going for a receiver there. Already has one touchdown in this first half. A second one not to be. I like where their headspace is, though. I mean, I really like the thought process, right? You got a guy who's already scored one, right? You want to go back to him, continue the hot hand, and make them adjust to you defensively. I like what they were trying to get done, even though they weren't successful. And no, it doesn't get there. Hits the crossbar, bounces back out. He had it online, but it comes up about a rotation short. Okay, Brandon, thanks, and welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. Let's get to the highlights. The Chargers are up right now and are looking to keep up the pressure moving forward. The Eagles won't panic either. They know they just need to take it one play at a time. All right, let's get it going. Let's roll those first half highlights. First and 10, Rivers is going to find his mark, and that goes as a 50-yard touchdown as they take a 7-0 lead. Third down from inside the 10. Rivers is on target here, and it's caught for the touchdown. The lead now at 11. Eagles with it now early in the second. Blunt's going to break into the secondary, and he'll win the sprint to the end zone. Eagles cutting the deficit to four. Chargers with the ball midway through the second. Rivers' pass on target to Keenan Allen. And this five-play drive goes for a touchdown. Now to late in the second. Blunt's hit the shake free with the spin, and he'll go in from two yards out, closing the gap to four. All right, Larry, thank you. A fairly tight game here as we get set to resume play in this second half. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Out come the Eagles now as he'll go on offense first here in the third quarter. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors but overall I think they wanted to be positive with them guys we're right there just not playing as well as we need to let's pick it up and we still have a chance to win this game yeah they do we'll see if they can pick it up now flags will come in I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping encroachment defense So they will accept the penalty and move forward. here to his running back and they get him down but not before he takes it across the 40 yard line a nice pickup there of 11 yards and it'll move the sticks 
I know anytime you watch a team run the ball really well, there's some pinball effect, people bouncing off of each other. There's also some things of beauty in there. We see these nice, explosive, strong runs. And this guy, he knows how to carry the football really well and continually wants the football. Why? He knows the offensive line is going to give him great effort, and he gives great effort himself to finish off runs. A handoff as they run the counter play. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Second down following the run. And to give this time to the tailback. Oh, and now he bowls one Garrett Blood. 30, the 20, 10, 5. And oh, so close as he takes it all the way to the two-yard line. It's a big play there for the Eagles. 52 yards. Trailing here in the third, and that run might just be the spark that this offense needs. And don't you just get the sense that he's going around, not just in the huddle, but looking over at the bench and saying, ball, give me the ball. Let me carry this thing home. And now a first down following that long game. They'll try to... No, bottled up. Fumble! It's out, it's loose! And fortunately for him, he's able to get it back, but it will be a loss on the play. Well, that was a big oops right there, but how about his ability to correct it? Loses the football, able to get it back himself. Yeah, pounced right back on it, keeps possession. Second and goal. They still need eight yards to find. It. And he'll take it into the end zone for an Eagles touchdown. Wendell Smallwood, an eight-yard touchdown run. And the Eagles have taken the lead. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you've got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. Five plays there on that drive. And the capper that put it in the end zone, a run of eight yards. Elliott now to kick this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most of, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10, kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use, just something to get you off to a quick start. 
They'll try and get the ground game going. Here's Gordon. And now running right through him. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. I once had a defensive player in the NFL tell me, if I beat and dominate the guy across from me, I'm helping my team. But well, winning one-on-one -on -one battles is always a part of the game. But when you have good team defense, as we just saw there, one broken tackle, but he didn't get away because the rest of the guys arrived to put him on the ground. Now Rivers. And he is out of bounds, getting it across the 30-yard line. The Charger first down, Rivers hooking up with Allen. If you're running out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Going to turn and give this one to his running back, Gordon. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down, you're set up very well for the rest of the drive. Second down, Rivers. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away. And now it's third. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. The Chargers on third down. They've hit four of seven. This will be third and six. Working out of the gun, Rivers. And he's got a man open, that's Allen. And he gets it down to the 48, enough for the first. Give him 15 yards on that one and a Charger first down. Well, we're used to seeing the guy that you consider the number one receiver double covered, but how about this guy? He's double covered and finds a way to make the play for a first down. That's how you increase your Madden rating, right? No doubt about that at all. And you know something? I think we'll hear about that from him soon. Back to the ground now with Gordon. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Wow, that play got shut down in a hurry. As soon as the snap came, you could see defensively they were just closing in. That was going nowhere. Yeah, you count on your offensive line to give you a little bit of space, a little bit of time so you can make a move. There was none there for him. And the offense behind the chains here a touch on second and 11. This is Gordon as they go to him again. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. Give him two on that run, and they're still left looking at a third and about nine to go. The Chargers on third down. They've had good success, five for eight to this point. This is third and nine. Operating from the gun, Rivers. And they're going to get him. He's taken down for a sack back at the 47-yard line. Brandon Graham in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. That's his second sack of the game. The best defensive ends, they do their homework as much as offensive guys do. They know how to beat the offensive lineman across from them, what moves they need to do to set them up. This guy's been pretty good at it all game long. Here's Drew Kayser now, as he's on to punt for L.A. This is away, and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. 
Out of bounds as he appeared to be looking for the corner. He got it. They're going to mark this at the four-yard line. Here comes the Charger defense now as they get set back out there. And they gave up a touchdown last drive. You kind of need to hit the reset button after every touchdown given up, Charles. I love that. And, and the way that you phrased it is perfect because from series to series, you can reset how the game is going to go. If you gave up a touchdown before, it doesn't mean you have to do it again. And if you made a great play before, you have to reset again anyway because they're going to attack. So I love the way you phrased it and put it out there. That's what they have to do in this series. Not like when you're playing a video game. You can't hit the reset button here. Let's go. No, you shouldn't anyway. That's for sure. They start on the ground here with Blum. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll bring up a second and 11. I don't know about you, partner, but I'm rubbing my eyes after that play. Did we just see that runner not get yardage? A big-time play by the defense. It does happen occasionally, even against the best running backs who are having big days. And he'll give it here to his running back. Showed some flash on the run, but he will be brought down shy of his 10. He gets them a little over half of what they needed. Now they're looking at a third and five. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. They fake the give. Now wins. This complete left side to Aguilar. The completion there winds up a wash, and it'll bring up fourth down. Pass complete, but no gain. No yards. Yeah. So you file that as unsuccessful. Yeah, you do, don't you? Except on the stats, throwing the ball. You get a completion. You get a catch. Yeah. But still, no, no yardage. yardage. Okay. Here's Donnie Jones now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away. And boy, it's another boomer. Now Benjamin. Oh, and now he bowls him over. Shedding the tackler and it gives him some room. So dangerous with a football in his hands. Call that a return of 38. And the Chargers will be set up pretty well as they take over in great field position. Phillip Rivers now gears up to take the offense back out there. He's hoping to channel his first half play. They had the lead at halftime, was playing well. Flip the script here in the third quarter a little bit. I think he misses the Pee Wee days, you know, <laughs> when you just got the orange slice yeah. at halftime, right? <laughs> and remember, weren't any real adjustments then, right? You weren't looking at some tape, right? You weren't looking at stuff off of the, the surface tablets. You just went back out and played. Right now, maybe the adjustments have caught up to him. Well, we'll see. Maybe he just needs a couple orange slices here for this drive. Now a play fake here on first down. And right side, Henry's got it. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Give him 12 yards there. The Chargers have a first down. Nice idea, nice concept there. Line him up on the left side of the formation. Let him sneak his way across. Coming back underneath. Put it in his hands. Let him get a few more yards after the catch, too. Great way to utilize a tight end on the drag route. So they're operating in the red zone. Another tote for Gordon. He's been busy this afternoon. And he's going to work this one down to about the five. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill.
One receiver left, that's Allen. Throwing, Rivers. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Keenan Allen, the intended target, and it's third and short. Boy, you will not see a quarterback of his caliber miss on one like that very often. I mean, there it is, wide open, got the shot, and he misfires. We talk about, boy, he'll want that one back all the time. <laughs> he definitely wants that one back. They'll come out in the pistol. Third and short yardage, Rivers. His pass caught at the four. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. And this one is right through. And that will tie us at 24. So he missed a field goal earlier, but he says not this time. And he's able to knock it through to give his guys three. And that's all you want as a kicker, a chance to redeem yourself. you got to have a short memory if you're going to survive at this level. And he's able to get back on track. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. to throw on second down. And his throw here is incomplete. He was trying to get it to Zach Ertz that time. And it's third and short. The Eagles on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. Here it's third and three. Now flags come in here. Look like one of the Eagles might have moved. Offense. That was a third and somewhat manageable now, not so manageable. Exactly, because you had a play call on that you felt like, hey, this could go quick, and it doesn't take much to get it done. Now, you got to start thinking about a little bit of a deeper route type of a call, especially if you want to throw it. The Eagles on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and eight. Now a play fake. Wentz. He's going to wind up and air it out. So they took a shot there on third down. Couldn't get it. Now it's four. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. Here's Donnie Jones now as he's on to punt for Philadelphia.
Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. <laughs> Just a two-yard return there following a punt of 48. And it'll be Charger football here as they take over. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And tough going there as he'll only get it up to about the 31. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll leave them with a third and three. But when you go from second and four to third and three, that just tells you who won that battle on the last play, huh? Yeah, first round went to the offense, second round the defense. Now it's a bootleg with Rivers. And that is incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they were unsuccessful. Here's Drew Kayser now. He's been terrific so far. Hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. Begin here with Blunt. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now at the Stub Hub Center in Carson. All even as we get ready to start the fourth. some space up to about the 25. And he gets them a little over half of what they needed. Now they're looking at a third and five. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. From the gun on third down, wins. And he connects with Ertz. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. They had two tight ends in the formation on that one. It looked to me like he had his pick of receivers downfield. I think he was just planning on going over the middle. That's what he did. Picked up first down, too. Oh 
So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. And to give this time to the tailback. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. going to get this one down to the 45. Call it a gain of four there, so it sets up a big play here. Third and a yard. The Eagles on third down. Not quite 50%. Four for nine. They're up against a third and one situation. From the gun, it's wins. And this is Ertz with it, right side. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. And eagle first down, Wentz to Ertz. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. go first and ten now this guy spent five years as a charger Darren Sproles and able to push his way forward here for a good little game and give him four yards there it'll be second and six this has been an up and down back and forth type of a game hasn't it maybe this long drive take a little bit of the wind out of their sails, kind of settle things down a little bit. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. They'll run it now out of the gun, and he'll get about three as he's brought down to the 28. The Eagles on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for ten. This time it's third and three. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. So the offense has it first and 10. They go play action here on first down. He will find Smith in the end zone. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Torrey Smith from 21 yards away. And the Eagles have moved out in front. And partner, they found a gap there on the post pattern, and it was in the middle third of the field. And that's really difficult to do because ordinarily the safeties are back there to prevent that happening. But they found the opening and exploited it. Elliott on for the extra point. And they will take a seven-point lead now. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it was capped off by an Eagles touchdown.
Elliott now to kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he will be brought down here at about the 17-yard line. The Chargers getting set to go. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Play fake to Gordon. Now Rivers. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. Offense still needing 10 yards. Second down. Throwing again, Rivers. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. That was a nice catch, but unable to stay in bounds. And remember, it wasn't a wide receiver who works <laughs> on that all the time. I was going to say, he, he likes to get the ball handed to him. Now, don't get me wrong, he's part of the passing game as well, but maybe a little out of his comfort zone there. Yeah, he might want to have a few words to say to us about that later, but I am still going with you on that one. Wide receivers work on a little bit more. Pressure comes, and down he goes. The Eagles get there for the sack. Brandon Graham getting him once again, his third sack of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Here's Drew Kayser now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Good open field tackling there. A 50-yard punt followed by just a one-yard return. And the Eagles take possession. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. First and ten, here's Wentz. Completes it to Aguilar. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. A gain of six there on first. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for them there, didn't it? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They got to go thank the guys on D. So the offense readies for a second and four. They'll run it now out of the gun. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead them to third down. Well, that's all about doing the dirty work right there defensively. Second and short yardage, that's all about plugging those gaps, not giving the running back a crease to run through, and has a nice job to hold them just a couple and force a third down. The Eagles on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This time they face a third and two. They'll run it now out of the gun. 
And he gets it down to the 48, enough for the first. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. I think this defense tired of seeing him run the football, and this D-line probably getting sick of the O-line as well. And as I'm watching this, I'm thinking about a conversation I had with Adam Gase, the head coach of the Miami Dolphins in the offseason. He told me that he asked his running backs each week for their favorite runs. Give me your three top runs. And right now, you're seeing a guy that's probably using his top runs to great advantage in this game. He is in a zone. On first down, Wentz. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Trevor Williams with a pick. And he's just across midfield and down at the 49-yard line. Last year, the Chargers 5-11, so you wouldn't think that they would be tied for the league lead in interceptions, but they were, Charles, with 18. And now they just need their offense, if they're going to do that again in 2017, to take advantage of and put more points on the board. now gears up to lead the offense on the field and the passing game I mean look at the numbers it's falling off when a team is struggling sometimes you look at the quarterback when the quarterback starts to struggle who goes over and picks him up yeah that's always a big one isn't it usually there's a quarterback whisperer somewhere and what I mean by that is whether it's an assistant coach whether it's one of his best friends on the team someone that can get in his ear Get with him and say, all right, my man, what do you need? What's going on here? So he's one person he can lean on. He's going to have to lean on that guy right now. Following the interception here, Rivers. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Travis Benjamin that time. And now it's second down. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. So second and 10 here. To throw again, Rivers. And his throw is incomplete. Antonio Gates, the veteran tight end, was the intended receiver. And that takes us from second to third down. And the offense looks to pick up the first here on third after that incompletion. From the gun, Rivers. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Here's Drew Kayser now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. And he'll keep this one away from Sproles as this is angled toward the sideline. And out of bounds, sailed over, looked like right near the pylon. This one's going to be perfect. Directional kicking at its finest right down at the one-yard line. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. And not great starting field position here for the offense. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll get this only up to about the three-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going. But you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Uh, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, 
tell you what they're looking for and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. And a nice pickup as this one gets them to the 10-yard line. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line, lower than the defensive front. They moved them and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. And this defense looks for one more stop here on third after the run. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Able to power through. And he'll be hit and dropped for a loss at the five-yard line. Losing four yards that time, and now it's fourth down. Yeah, let me pump out my chest a little bit, even though I'm not rooting for either team. That was a really nice defensive play. It's awfully fun to watch, even in an offensive game. Here's Donnie Jones now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. So a short drop, but he's able to get it out, and this is a good kick. Taking it about the 36. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. down Rivers and he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds it's a gain of seven and it'll be a second down I know most of the time when the ball's in the air you're thinking wide receiver tight end but running backs they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays completed pass play now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground Rivers now on second down. Gates has it over the middle. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. A good pick up there, a 22. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Rivers now to throw on first down. And this is caught. For the moment, it's a touchdown, but multiple flags down, so let's sort this out. Late game, that hurts. Take the touchdown off the board. No doubt about it, and this is where you make a great movie scene, right? Go in, rally the team. Okay, we lost points there. Let's get it back and go out and score again. Can he get it done? The offense certainly looking to score some points, but they also need ball security here late as we get down to the final moments of this one. Now a second down throw for Rivers. This is Gordon on the dump off. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. It'll be a three-yard gain, and they're going to face a third down. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. Ike, has been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd went to ballet school, got the toes down, and stayed in bounds. 
on third down. It's Oliver. And he gets the first down yardage before he's brought down just outside the 10 at the 11. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. So it's Charger football as we welcome you back from the two-minute warning. They come up on a first and ten, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. This time it's Gordon, and he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Rivers has been through this many times as he'll hustle his guys to the line. He'll look to throw, and it looks like he'll be just a yard shy of the five here as he's out at the six. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. And this is going to be incomplete. Figuring they're going for it on fourth down. Remember, though, they do have all three timeouts, so even if they don't get it, all is not lost. Yeah, normally in this situation, when you're talking about having to go for it, everything is in this play. But as you noted, with those three timeouts, they actually have a little bit of a safety net. Desperation time. Rivers on fourth down. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Kendricks from that outside linebacker spot. He's able to get in there for a loss of nine. So they'll trudge off the field with a bitter taste in their mouths after that failed fourth down conversion. Yeah, there'll be a lot of analysis there on the sidelines. Was it the right call? Was it, the, was it against the right defense? Should they have even gone for it at all? Will that change what they do going forward in this game? A lot of questions to be answered by them. The defense doesn't really care. They're like, bring it on again. We'll stop you the next time, too. The Eagles offense now gets set to head back onto the field. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is, do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. Now a handoff here to his running back. They showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. And now the Chargers are going to look up here and signal for a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Wins to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game.
And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. And the defense will try and pin their ears back and get pressure again here after the sack. It's third down. Here's Sproles. So we got three of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Here's Donnie Jones now, standing right on his own five-yard line. Returning, it's Benjamin. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. They're down here in a one-score game. But the time, it's a factor, but it's not a huge factor right now, is it? It's really not, because this amount of time gives them a chance to run their offense, to go through play sequences. And this is what they work on every week in practice, usually on a Friday. They go over this type of a situation, late game situation. What are we going to do when we have the opportunity? They've called these plays a bunch of times. Now's their chance to execute them. Yeah, they have the opportunity now. Here's the execution. Back to throw. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a Charger first. And he did exactly what they needed him to do, Charles. Got out of bounds. They have no timeouts. And they knew that before the play even began. Still executed it. How many times have we seen it happen where you know it, yet a guy's still looking for a timeout or trying to stay in bounds? He got it done. Now the offense lining up first and 10. Back to throw. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. The Chargers passing game rolling a bit here. They've got another first. Well, how about keeping your head about you in this situation? No more timeouts. Finds a way to get out of bounds. Now they can breathe a little bit as they contemplate what to do on the next down. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. He's back to throw. Got a man over the middle, it's Williams. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15, just shy of the 10. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. They'll look to throw. 
And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was looking for his tight end, Hunter Henry. And that'll bring up second down. The way he's throwing the football today, almost a surprise when he doesn't complete a pass like happened there, but he needs a few more to get his guys downfield. Well, the way he's throwing it leads him to believe that he's going to get those completions, and that means the guys going out for passes, they'll run even harder because they expect it as well. Here's Rivers. This is caught, and he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. That time the completion goes for four yards, and we're set up with a third and goal. Rivers. And it's caught. It's a touchdown. So they rally here in the final minute, and they're an extra point away from tying this game. So getting the big touchdown they needed late in the fourth, now what do you do? You conservative and just tie it up? No, I think you put your practice into game situation. Go as fast as possible. You already have your play call ready to go. Go for two and decide it right now. And now a critical extra point attempt here. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. So that drive spanned five plays. And it ends with the Chargers getting into the end zone. Set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. This fielded at the two. Powering forward. The Eagles offense now, they head back on the field. They've got work to do, but they do still have a bit of time here. And they've got to feel comfortable with that, but they have all their play sequences called. If they get out of bounds, that allows them to huddle and call another play. But if they don't, it's hurry up to the line of scrimmage and either spike it and stop the clock or continue to move it downfield in order to try and get in range and win this game. See if they can do just that. <laughs> to throw his wins. Going underneath to blow it. And before this second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in this football game. So the offensive unit called the T.O., and now we are ready to resume play. Second down now after the pass completion. Wins to throw. To the sideline. Wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it. But he is able to keep the feet in bounds. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. Oh, it's a nickel set here defensively on third and inches. Still want to be prepared for a pass. Now wins. And he dumps it off to blow it. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42.
So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. Now flags come in here. Looked like one of the Eagles might have moved. Offense. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. some of the penalty yardage as it's second down. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Midfield. Here's Wentz. That'll be incomplete with nine seconds now showing on the clock. Nelson Aguilar, the intended receiver, and it's third and short. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is it just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. Wentz looking to throw on third and two. And he connects with Ertz. And now with four seconds left, we get a timeout call. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. So it all comes down to a rookie kicker, Jake Elliott. This from 51 yards for the win. And that is no good. And that changes everything here in OT. Final whistle blows, and we need some extra time here to decide who will be the victor. 60 minutes, just not enough some days to decide who's going to win the game. a little teaching moment here overtime rules remind us how this goes partner okay so in the past we had sudden death first team to score wins but no longer now if the team receives the ball scores a touchdown they win the game if they kick a field goal though or don't score the other team gets a possession and after both teams get a possession then we're into sudden death first team to score wins the game So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. Except for their first drive here in overtime. And this is where the crowd can really become a factor. They've had to battle it all day. But I know what you're saying. In overtime, 
that gets doubled, doesn't it? At least because now the crowd really wants to be involved and help their team. And that first drive can dictate the whole thing because they know if this team takes it downfield and scores a touchdown, it's game over. And it's been loud in here so far. And to give this time to the tailback. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Boy, that's a lot of sirloin steak to be taken down for no gain, partner. <laughs> Are you trying to suggest that he is a huge man? He is not a Not just a big, big man, big, a huge big, man. Big, big boy. Well, how about the credit then for the defense to be able to chop that big tree and put him on the ground? I know back when you played, it took four of you to take a guy like that down, right? No, well, that's for sure. And you know what, know what else? I didn't want to challenge him at dinner either. <laughs> and here's another tackle made at the line. So they're converging well on the football now. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. In need of a third and 10 conversion to keep this opening drive of OT alive. First throw of overtime for Wentz. The open man is Smith. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. They run the counter now on first down. And able to get this one all the way up to about the 46-yard line. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. Just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. Fresh set of downs here. Now it's Sproles. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Again, they'll run it again at Sproles. He'll get about four here, down to the 43-yard line. Hoping to keep this OT drive alive. Now they face a third and two. gun it's wins and incomplete the contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down decision time now on fourth and about a yard and a half I can still hear my high school coach John Ford right now I want my number one play with my number one runner over my number one blocker <laughs> get me the first down but some may very well say punt this thing away pin them down deep and play field position Oh, and now movement and a whistle, and they may have to rethink their plans on fourth down. 
So that'll back him up five. Here's Donnie Jones now on for a very important punt here in overtime. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. Their defense did its job, got the stop. All they need is three, and this is over. Couldn't have done much else other than score themselves and end it. But they turned it back over to them, and now all they need is a field goal to win the game. An excellent job by the defense. Can the offense finish things off? Yeah, part one is done. Now part two. Now Gordon on first down. And an alley to run. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. It'll go as a gain of 11 at a Charger first. It's really come into vogue to talk about the different gaps that the defense tries to attack in an offensive line. And most of the time, we're talking about blitzes. How many times have you heard double A-gap blitz? But where is the A-gap? It's the space between the center and the guards, either side. So when you're having a double A-gap blitz, there's two guys coming through that gap. In this situation, though, that A-gap wasn't open for the defense to exploit. The offensive line took care of it, protected it, and moved the defensive guys out of the way to allow for that nice run. Benjamin with it over the middle. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 12 yards there. The Chargers have a first down. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. This is Gordon. And three yards there takes him to the 45. Here we go with second and seven. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. Eagle pressure too much this time. Down he goes. Timmy Jernigan in there to record another sack. Their sixth of the afternoon. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. So it's third and long for the Chargers and Rivers after the sack. From the gun, Rivers. And he's going to go down again. Brandon Graham. Who else? He's in there for his fourth sack of the afternoon. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. Here's Drew Kayser now as he's on to punt for L.A. Yeah. 
His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. A big boot that time, 57 yards, the official distance. And the Eagles will be backed up deep to get the drive started as they take over first and 10. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. And you know, their previous possession, they were able to move the football, but still wound up punting in the end. You know, in 2016, Carolina had a 20-play drive mm, yeah. that lasted over 10 minutes. And remember how it ended? In a punt. Yeah, I mean, how does that happen? You just don't see that happen every day. And this one maybe not quite that bad, but still, you'd like to have a chance for points if you hold the football that long. Agreed. They'll go Wentz to Blunt here. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. This being their second opportunity in overtime, third overall drive, see if they can settle into a rhythm. And that's what you're looking for. Get a few first downs, move the ball downfield, have some confidence, get yourself in a spot where you can at least kick a field goal to win it. But I tell you this, if I'm the play caller, I'm looking at that part of my sheet that says playmakers. Get the ball in their hands. Critical situation. Now's their time. Ball start. Offense. The guilty party chance. Warmack, the guard out of Alabama. throwing on second down. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. On any passes in the middle of the field, anyone who's going after the football is going to be conscious that it's probably going to be contested and often physically. Sometimes that leads to drops. Incomplete pass on second down. Let's see what the offense draws up here on third. Play action to Sproles. Wins. And it's incomplete. Took a shot. Couldn't connect. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit, and they may have to change accordingly. Here's Donnie Jones now as he's on to punt for Philadelphia. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. That'll be a 50-yard punt with eight on the return. And it'll be Charger football here as they take over. And the Chargers coming out of the field now. Neither team scored yet. Now we go to sudden death. Next points win this game. How about the tension right now? It is ratcheted up, isn't it? I mean, now whatever happens, points are scored. That's your ball game. Can't wait to see the defense now. Do they get a little more aggressive in order to not let a team just drive the ball easily down the field? Got to be careful, though, right? Yeah, if you're too aggressive, you just give up something easy and cheap. But some defensive coordinators, they'd rather take a stand that way as opposed to being nickeled and dimed down the field. On first and ten, Rivers. Incomplete. still left on second down. Hurry up. Throwing again. Rivers. Oh, he almost had it. Would have been a big interception here in OT. Instead, it'll give him another shot on third down. Oh, oh, 
So a ways to go here on third and ten. Working out of the gun, Rivers. And now another one thrown incomplete. Here's Drew Kayser now as he's on to punt for L.A. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. Out of bounds and close. The question, was it a touchback? No. They'll say it crossed out at the two-yard line. Now Philadelphia ready to get going on offense again. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shot of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. Very tough spot here for the offense to start. there as he gets it up to about the five yard line now before the second down play we'll get whistles and a timeout they'll be left with just one remaining here at OT and welcome back the offensive unit they took the timeout and now they get set to line up as we resume action Second down following the run. Shotgun now for Wentz. Ertz has it left side. And he'll get it up a little shy of the 15. They'll spot him down at the 14-yard line. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. In overtime, you have to be smarter than that. A personal foul just can't happen. Have to have poise. So here we go, first and ten now. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got to jump here. Encroachment, defense. So that one will be accepted. So first down, five yards to go. Working from the gun, Wentz. And that time almost intercepted. That would have changed things here in overtime, but instead second down. He's lucky to be getting that one back. After what they've done with him all day long with all the targets trying to go after him, he's obviously gotten smart, and his pride has kicked in. Made a terrific play. Wentz to throw on second down. Ertz over the middle. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Now we're going to get a timeout. 
with five seconds left here in overtime. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. So the offense has it first and 10. Now Wentz. He's going to loft one deep over the middle. And incomplete on the deep ball. Wentz again here on second and ten. That ball's caught. Aguilar right side. Twelve yards there as they move the chains. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Here's Blow. And he'll take it inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. So the offense now dealing with a second and seven. Here's Wentz to throw. Smith catches left side. And he gets it down to the 32. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. And he'll give it here to his running back. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. I think that run gives us evidence that the defense is getting a little bit tired out there. They've been out in the field for a long time. And that last run, they just cut right through them. yards left for the offense it's second down they'll run it with Sproles and he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20 yard line call it a gain is seven and it gets him a new set of downs and I know you, with every carry, especially in overtime, you're just saying, if you're that ball carrier, hold on to the football. Hold on to it, protect it, but not necessarily settle it because you're trying to get to the end zone. You're trying to end the game right here. And I know the defensive guys poking, clawing, breaking, trying to knock the ball free and protect their end zone. Yeah, like you alluded to, especially this part of the field. And now the Chargers are going to signal for another timeout. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play.
Right now, everything resting on the right foot of Jake Elliott. This to win it in overtime. And he got it. The kick is good in overtime. He's able to split the uprights. Well, we thought this game would be a good one. It did not disappoint into overtime, and it took the field goal to win it. And we always pay lip service to how important it is to play defense. And usually we focus on the big offensive pyrotechnics, right? But in this case, they got the ball back on defense, gave themselves a chance, and they capitalized on it with a victory. And I don't care what distance that field goes from in overtime. The knees are always knocking, but he pushed it through. <laughs> Not only that, think about your snapper, your holder. A lot of nerves for them, too, because they have to do their job in order to give him one last chance to put a foot to it. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew here at EA Sports, I'm Brandon Gordon.